Opening week has arrived officially on the Rico Bronia. Thank you very much for downloading and for listening. And please subscribe if you haven't to the Rico Bronia because there will be a lot of Met content as this series and this season rolls on. If you're new to the Rico, the way the regular season usually works is we're guaranteeing you two podcasts per week. And then we'll have some pop ups, some instant reactions to games. So, but at minimum, you're getting two at the end of each series that's played. So, for example, the Mets are opening up this season against the Milwaukee Brewers. They will wrap up the series on a Sunday afternoon. By the time midnight arrives, we guarantee a brand new Rico Bronia. So, after every single series and then a lot of pop up episodes, depending on what the hell is going on. Now, as we lead up to opening day, we're giving you a pot every single day. The main focus of today's Rico will be our MLB predictions episode. So we'll talk some Mets, but a lot of baseball in general. Also this week, we'll go Mets specific prediction episode, and we'll have Mets versus Yankees bets. And then obviously it all leads up until opening day on Thursday, which feels like will really be Friday because the weather for Thursday is atrocious. So my advice if you've taken Thursday off, but you're working Friday, figure out a way to flip-flop that because I have a feeling that's what we're going to see. Uh, last year when they canceled opening day, the home opener on a Thursday and moved it to a Friday, there really wasn't good reason because the weather turned out to be nicer on the day they postponed as compared to the following day. But I've been checking the weather app every day for like a week and a half, and the weather does not look good. I would assume the Mets would make a decision 24 hours before uh, because they have that built-in off day. So I think they'll make a decision Wednesday, which certainly makes life a little bit easier if you got to rearrange your schedule. I don't think they're going to wake up Thursday morning and make people drive to the stadium with the thought of there being a game. But the good news is we will have baseball, whether it's Thursday or Friday. The other piece of good news is that spring training has mercifully ended. We aired the Mets-Yankees game on Monday on WFAN, and Tiki and I signed on after the game was over. And this is how you know I was over spring training, and I was so ready for this to end. We're airing the game. The game is on, yes. It's got my full attention if I want to give it, and I could not give it. I could not keep focus on this game. I mean, it was nice to see that Sean Manaya pitched well and got through it, and I saw the lineup. The Mets pretty much gave you an opening day-esque lineup. But I don't know about you guys. I was so over spring training over the last few weeks. Just get us to opening day. Let's get to the real thing. And here we are. Because even looking at the spring training numbers, you know, what the hell do they mean? You know, we could sit here today and talk about how great the pitching was. And the pitching was great. I mean, I'm going through these numbers outside of Jose Quintana. You know, Luis Severino pitched really well. Tyler McGill pitched really well. Sean Manaya pitched pretty well. If you look at some of the guys vying for the last bullpen spots, like Johan Ramirez, he pitched very well. Sean Reed Foley pitched very well. But you know what? What the hell does it mean? And by the way, conversely, the offense was not great. I, I It was nice to see, though, that Starling Marte, who only had eight hits during spring training, had four of those hits in his last three games. So maybe he's building towards something as he comes back. The other thing is the lineup that the Mets posted on the final spring training game featured Jeff McNeil hitting cleanup. I, I stand by the fact that that's not going to happen on opening day. That because Jeff McNeil was behind in spring training, and, and Mendoza said this a few days ago, that a part of the reason why McNeil was hitting cleanup was to get him more at-bats, and that's what it did. Now, he ended up finishing spring training without a base hit. I think he finished 0-4. I got to see the exact number, but he ended up going 0-13. In spring training. So Jeff McNeil completes spring training without getting a base hit. But I think that's the main reason why he was hitting cleanup and why Marte was hitting fifth and DJ Stewart was hitting sixth. Then Francisco Alvarez. I think it was more about getting these guys at bats. When we get to Thursday or Friday and this season opens, my prediction to you is Jeff McNeil will not be hitting cleanup. Uh, one other thing before we get into the ML predictions, we were breaking down Mets versus Phillies and the strengths that the Phillies have versus the strengths that the Mets have. So, of course, I give the Mets the edge in bullpen, and then I see MLB Network ranks the top bullpens in baseball, and they put the Phillies first. So I ain't going to apologize. I stand by my analysis. I don't think their bullpen's that good. And I think a part of the problem is, to me, 
if you don't have that lockdown closer, and the Phillies don't. Now, they have a lot of depth guys, Sir Anthony Dominguez, Jeff Hoffman, Jose Alvarado, guys like that, but they don't have the certain thing at the back end of their bullpen like the Mets do. So congratulations to the Phillies. I wish them all sorts of congratulations. They finished first in MLB Network's bullpens right now. Good for you. Spoiler alert, that ain't going to happen at the end of the season. And I would predict to you the Met bullpen will finish with a better team ERA than the Phillies bullpen. Before we get to our MLB predictions, Pete Hoffman has a grievance with me. And so I will allow you now the floor to air your grievance with me, your humble Rico host. Go ahead. I love you, Evan. But what the hell are you trying to do to scheme out of a bet? Like the fact that we heard Pete Alonzo had an actual voice of Pete Alonzo say, you cannot shave your beard a bet as a bet until I have a contract signed and you've gone out of your way to hide this from everybody. You, my friend, you're dead to me. <laughs> That's our thing now. <laughs> well, let me clarify for those not, not aware back in early November, I declared on the air that I would not cut my hair until Pete Alonzo gets what he deserves, and that is a contract extension. A few weeks later, that did turn into including my beard because Pete Alonzo showed up at Madison Square Garden for a Rangers game. And much like Jeff McNeil did a year earlier, I thought maybe it was a sign that the extension was about to get done. So I got coaxed. I wouldn't even say it was a bet, even if it was phrased that way. I was coaxed into including my beard in this proclamation of loyalty to Pete Alonzo. And that started in late November. And obviously the beard grew, the hair grew, and then it grew some more, and then it grew some more, and I look like Sami Zayn, the professional wrestler. I had one opportunity to get out of this beard by playing Sean Morash and Pickleball. I lost. It is what it is. And then finally I made a deal with the guys on the show. If I color my beard every day for three weeks, and then shave half of it off, so I walk around like a circus freak for a week, does that get me out of this? Everybody agreed. Now, a few weeks ago, I did go down to spring training. I may have left this part out, and I did talk to Pete. And I talked to him about a couple of things. And one of the things I spoke to Pete about was, hey, Pete, I've been growing this beard out for you in loyalty. Do you give me permission to cut the beard? Not that I needed permission, but I was asking. Hey, do you mind? And much like when you ask your wife a question, sometimes you should probably just not ask and ask for forgiveness after and just do it. So I made the mistake of asking Pete Alonzo, is it okay to cut my beard? He said, absolutely not. He, <laughs> he said I would be letting down Met fans and be letting down my own word and letting him down if I cut my beard. I didn't lie, Hoff. I just kept that to myself. And then today, you know, I basically got called out by Steve Gelbs that he heard the conversation and that I can't cut the beard. Pete Alonzo doesn't want me to. And now the beard remains. So I'm going to grow a very, very long beard until December of next year or whenever the hell he signs. And we can move on. But what do you want from me? I was desperate to get out of the freaking beard, bro. L listen, if, if when my wife and I are on a diet together, right? And she's like, hey, how'd you do today? And I'm like, oh, I, I ate perfect. I stuck to the plan. And then she finds out. <laughs> that I fucking was eating like a slice of pizza or whatever it is. That's lying. That's cheating. <laughs> like I tried to hold the truth because I just wanted to get, get away with it. It's no big deal. It's a white lie. You're, you're trying to get away with it. Listen, we all know the objective here. You hate this beard. I actually think it's starting to look really good on you, but that's besides the point. The hair definitely looking slick. But you real honestly, this was a, a lot. Thank you, Steve Gelbs. If, that, if it wasn't for him, We'd all be, I, I'd feel cheated as a human being. Yeah, I think he did me a favor because I would have lived with a very, very guilty conscience of knowing that I cut the beard, even though Pete Alonso wasn't approving it. So, yes, thank you, Steve Gelbs. Thank you, Pete Alonso. The beard lives on. Now, now, now one question. One, one yes. question, though. Does this make you feel more confident that Pete Alonso is coming back to the Mets? Because if he signs a con, if he signs a contract, is it oh, is the bet if he signs with the Mets or if the what or just in general? Well, I, I mean, I said it for the Mets. Like him signing with the Toronto Blue Jays during the offseason doesn't make me feel better. I look, I worry about that when that happens. 
<laughs> I'm obviously married to this beard now for a, for a long time. But to answer your question, yeah, of course it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel, genuinely, jokes aside, that Pete Alonso really wants to be here. And I think we already knew that. Like, I don't think you needed me to go down to spring training and have him say, don't cut your beard to know that. But it only confirms the guy wants to be here. Otherwise, he would have said, yeah, screw it. Cut your freaking beard. Who the hell cares? The fact he cared, yeah. I think he cares about New York. He cares about all of us. And hopefully the business will work out and this deal will get done. It's obviously not getting done in April. It's not getting done before the offseason. So we are going to have to sweat this out the way we sweated out Brandon Nemo successfully, the way we sweated out Jacob DeGrom unsuccessfully. So I do feel good that he will end up back and I will get that glorious day, maybe with Pete Alonzo at my side at a press conference where I can cut that freaking beard. Now let's get to the podcast I always look forward to, and that is our MLB predictions. I've been doing this for probably ever before I was even on the radio when I was a kid. I would write down my MLB predictions for all sports, but in this case, we're talking baseball. And I'd write it down. I would look at it. I'd put it away. And then come the end of the season, I would see how accurate I was and how wrong I was. We actually did this last year here on the Rico. And I will remind you, my predictions a year ago were bloody awful. It may have been, in all my years writing down MLB predictions, my worst year of predictions. I went out on a limb on a few things, and it didn't go well. My World Series featured two teams that did not even make the postseason. I picked the Chicago White Sox to go to the World Series. I can't, I can't even say that out loud. And I had my reasons. I don't want to go through it. And I had them taking on the San Diego Padres. And obviously, we know the Padres had a very disappointing season. Now, I've had my good years. My finest moment was back in 2019. And I, and I did an Evan Roberts podcast on this, so I'm sure you could find it somewhere. But me and John Dostremski did MLB predictions, and that was the year I actually nailed the World Series for the first time in my life, the Washington Nationals against the Houston Astros. How will 2024 go? Who the hell knows? But here's how we'll do it. We'll go division by division. We'll give you our predictions. We will then give you postseason. We'll obviously also give you awards. And we'll hold ourselves accountable. Come October, we will also have a Rico Bronia in which we go through our predictions and we see how accurate we are. I will tell you right now, my World Series, and we'll get to it obviously at the end, features a surprise World Series entrance, entrant and a sort of expected World Series entrant. So let's start things off, Pete, in the American League West. I say we go out West to a division that we care very, very little about even though we play everybody these days. And I'll start things off by saying, I think we are going to get one, two, three playoff teams from the American League West in 2024. I do pick the Astros to win the division. They are dealing with some injuries early this season, especially with Justin Verlander for the first couple of weeks, Lance McCullers. But I fully expect in a contract year from Alex Bregman, in another big year from Jose Altuve, and a healthy year from Jordan Alvarez, who certainly has a chance to win an MVP, from your guy, Kyle Tucker, that the Astros, like they do every year, will have a top-five offense, will have a top-five pitching staff. We know about what they did to their bullpen adding Josh Hader, and I fully expect that the Astros will match the expectations, win 95 games, and win the American League West. But I do think the Seattle Mariners, despite an offense that does not impress you, the Seattle Mariners have arguably the best pitching staff in all of Major League Baseball. When you look at how nasty the top of their rotation is, Luis Castillo, George Kirby, I love the Mariners to get back into the postseason. They've been consistent the last couple of years, high 80s, low 90s. They've been in that mix every single year. I think they win 91 games and take one of the wild card spots. And I think the Texas Rangers off of their championship season will win 88 games and also make the postseason. So I expect a relatively close American League West with Houston 1, Seattle 2, and Texas 3. Then you've got your big drop-off. Obviously, the Angels went from being interesting and bad by losing Shohei Otani to just flat-out bad. I think they finished this season by winning probably about 70 games. So I think they're in that 70 and 92 range. And then we all know about Oakland. They will lose over 100 games. Those are my thoughts on the American League West. Pete? We're kind of close. Um, the Astros, I think, are going to, again, you, until they fall off, they have to be number one. Now, I don't know if they're going to win 100 
games at all. I haven't like penciled around 97. And I will shock you and say this: the A's are not going to be the worst team in the league in the in the, in the division. Oh. It's going to be the it's going to be the Angels. I, I don't. They can't do anything right. They just lost Shohei Otani. I, I again, you just don't know how healthy Mike Trout is. You have literally have a guy you're paying a ton of money in in Anthony Rendon who says. He doesn't care about playing baseball. It's just not a top priority to him. And, I mean, the prospects they, they keep on bringing up, they're just whiffing on it. It's just not a good team. I don't care what you do. They may be worse than any other team in the league this year. I think the A's will be close behind it just because of the talent. But at least I feel like the A's, you have kids that want to play. You have. Like, I'm not sure who's going to be you know, a top player. But I feel like they're going to go out there and try to, like, hey, we're an underdog. Everyone thinks we're a piece of crap. So they'll scrape out a couple more wins. I will say this much, though. I love the Mariners. I, they are going to make the playoffs again. So you got Astros, Mariners, but the Rangers are not. They, they, the Rangers got lucky last year. They pushed right. They pushed the right buttons. They were able to, to control their pitching, made a lot of trades at the deadline. They're not going to be able to do back-to-back trade deadlines again. I Again, I still think there's a lot of issues with their pitching staff. I don't feel comfortable with it. They have a lot of good players. Don't get me wrong. Their offense is sexy. Between with between Nathaniel Lowe, between Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, uh, Dolores Garcia, you go down that list. It's beautiful. But I just don't tr- trust the pitching. And if you have to duct tape it again, I'm worried about it. And don't forget, with Texas, Wyatt Langford, who is going to make this team and have a big-time year, Evan Carter, who burst onto the seat in the postseason. Their lineup is so damn good, especially with the youth that they're adding. Uh, I, I drafted Wyatt Langford in our fantasy league in the third round, and it's a keeper league, so third round is really like fifth or sixth round. And I got ridiculed off. People were like, you went too early on Wyatt Langford. I think you were the guy who said you went too early on Wyatt Langford. I'm one of the guys who said you went too early on Wyatt Langford. (laughs) You know, it's funny. Wyatt Langford is one of the hot names in fantasy if you haven't picked it or done your fantasy draft yet. But here's the lesson I always say in fantasy. If you want your guy, go get him. Because if you screw around and you putz around and you wait because you think it's too early, someone else will scoop him up. What made me feel better after I took him in the third round, as I was told by a guy who was picking two picks later, he was going to take him there. So sometimes you just got to scoop up the guy that you want. All right, let's go to the American League Central. This one was tough. I was debating Minnesota versus Cleveland. I was going back and forth on the two. The Twins lose Sonny Gray this offseason. Duran is hurt to start the year, which hurts their bullpen. I kind of want to pick Cleveland, but I'm so unimpressed with their lineup. But I think the top of the rotation can be very, very good, especially if Shane Bieber has that big year in a contract year. You get Tristan McKenzie back and healthy. Bybee was impressive last year. Like, I love their rotation, and that's why I end up leaning towards them and picking them to steal the American League Central in the high 80s, let's say 88 wins. I think Minnesota takes a step back. It's a good pennant race, so I think they finish about three games short and win 85 games. I know Detroit is kind of a hot team to step up and maybe be a surprise in the AL Central. I have them in the low 80s, a drop-off to Kansas City at about 75 wins. And then the team I loved a year ago, unfortunately, I have to face the reality with the Chicago White Sox. I think they're on their way to losing 100 games, and I think they are a candidate along with Oakland. You brought up the Angels. Sure, they're in it too as one of those teams that could be the worst in the American League. So, I go to the Cleveland Guardians at 88 wins to be the lone playoff team from the American League Central. They make the postseason. They win the AL Central. They take it back from the Minnesota Twins. I think Minnesota's keeping it. I mean, listen, I'm not saying that they're going to run away with it. They're going to get 86 wins. That's about it. Um, White Sox, I'm with you. I mean, they may be the worst team in the league. I'm going to put them at 60. Uh, Tigers, I don't know, man. Like I, I know they're they're the hot team, but I don't feel good about them. I really don't. Like Javi Baez still sucks, you know. And I understand that that that's just one player, but Parker Meadows, you know, you got Turkelson, you got all these guys that are are, are up and coming. But again, I got to see it first before I really believe in this team. So I just think the Tigers are still going to be a little bit wishy-washy, probably win closer to 65, 64, 65 games. Guardians, I'm thinking, 
I like them, but I don't trust their pitching. And who knows when they trade off Shane Bieber. That's probably going to happen. 77 wins for them. I think the Royals are going to sneak up, not make the playoffs, but get the 81 wins. I think with Detroit, what makes them dangerous is that they've got a handful of young players. You touched on a few of them. Parker Meadows, who's a top prospect. Um, Colt Keith, who they locked up to that long-term deal. And even Spencer Torkelson, if he could become the player they expect that could make their lineup dynamic. But there's a few questions around them, and I don't love their pitching after you get past the A school. But we'll see. I mean, I think the AL Central has a chance to at least be a competitive division because I don't think anyone's that good. So if you're in the mid-80s or even the low 80s, you have a good chance to be in that AL Central race. Then we get to the American League East. A couple of things. I think the Orioles are obviously this team, and they will be a force to be reckoned with for a very long time. And you'll notice this with some of my predictions from the National League as well. I think it is very, very challenging when you have a year in which I don't want to say the Orioles came out of nowhere. I picked the Orioles to make the playoffs last year, so I was high on them a year ago. I think they exceeded even my expectations by winning the division, by winning the amount of games they won. I think it's very difficult when you're a young team to go out and do it again. With that said, I give them a lot of credit. They were aggressive in this offseason, adding a real ace like Corbin Burns. And once Jackson Holiday comes up, they just add another young stud to their you know cavalcade of young studs that they have. I don't think they're going to have a bad year. I don't even think they're going to miss the playoffs. I think they go back to the postseason, but I think they have a dip in win total, and I have them back in the low 90s. And I think a part of that is, look, this is a tricky division. You know, as bad as the Red Sox are, and I expect the Red Sox to be bad, you know the Rays are a pain in the ass. You know the Blue Jays are a solid team. We know the Yankees are a solid team. So I have the Orioles not winning the division and taking a step back and winning one of the wild card spots. Prior to Cole getting hurt and prior to the questions around DJ LeMahieu as he's going to start the year on the IL, I had the Yankees winning over 100 games. Now, these injuries have scared me to a degree, especially Garrett Cole not being there for the first two months. But my reasoning behind why I had the Yankees over 100 wins is I think their lineup is not a little bit better from last year. I think it's a lot better than last year. And it's not just last year. You know, if you look at 2022, when the Yankees were a top offensive team, it was a mirage. Like, I'll be the first to tell you, it was an absolute mirage because Aaron Judge had a historical season. If you took everyone not named Judge and you looked at their numbers versus last year's numbers, they're almost the same. They're not great. So now you may ask, well, what is changing things? What changes things to me is A, Juan Soto, which is the obvious. You just added one of the best bats in all of baseball, who I think makes everybody better. But not only that, Alex Verdugo, while I don't love him, is such an upgrade over who he's replacing. I mean, think about it. Juan Soto and Alex Verdugo are replacing the at-bats of Billy McKinney. Early in the season, Aaron Hicks, guys like that. I think Volpe takes a little bit of a step in year two. And I also think Anthony Rizzo has a bounce back year. I think we now know what happened to Anthony Rizzo last year with the concussion. And I think he's just significantly better. So I think the Yankees are going to have a really, really good offense. But obviously, the Cole injury has to scare you because there isn't that same rock solid certainty at the top of the rotation that they would have had. I also kind of question their bullpen. I think we've all just assumed that the Yankees are going to have this great bullpen because they always have a great bullpen. But I don't think you could just write something down and assume it's going to happen again. So I diminished their win total that I initially had. I had them at about 103 wins. Now I'm kind of scared off and bringing them back down to 98, which I think will be good enough to win the AL East. I think the Yankees win the AL East. I think the Orioles win 90 games. I think the Blue Jays finish one game short of a wild card spot by winning 87 games. Uh, the Rays, man, they're just so tough to predict year to year. They lose guys. They find a way to replace them. I think they'll be feisty, but I think they missed the playoffs with about 83, 84 wins. And then I've got the Red Sox who just suck. They go out and they make the move for Lucas Giolito. They lose him. They've done very little else. I think they sit with over 90 losses. Last year, we had a run where it appeared like every team in the American League East had a chance to finish above 500. That was like a thing for a while. It's not going to be a thing this year. Yankees Orioles make the playoffs out of the ALE. So my five postseason teams, number one, 
Astros Yankees will be your two teams with first round buys. You got the Cleveland Guardians winning the AL Central. And then your other three wild card teams will be the Seattle Mariners, the Baltimore Orioles, and the Texas Rangers. Those are my five playoff teams. Yankees winning the AL East. All right. For, first of all, I, I love you, but you're crazy. So you have, first of all, isn't it six playoff teams now? Yeah, I just said that. You said five. Oh, I, I, I misspoke. The six playoff teams. Okay. The you three wild me. card teams and three divisions. I Thank you for at least correcting me. Six playoff teams. Yeah. I name six, I say five. My apologies. <laughs> I understand. Listen, they keep on changing things around. I get it. I get it. First of all, let me just – I'll save the best for last. How about that? Red Sox suck, so we agree with that. Orioles are taking the division. 98 wins, no question. Blue Jays. 89 wins, I think. They're going to be – listen, this offense is going to take off. I think the bullpen is good, and the pitching staff, you know, is not the best, but I think that they're going to find a way to start winning games. I think they're just going to start overpowering teams, so Blue Jays are going to take off. The Rays are always a contender, and that's why I can't count them out. I know you're saying, that, you know, you can't count them in this time. They're going to be tough, but that's why I can't take them out of the playoffs. The team that's going to shock you, it's the New York Yankees. Everyone's sitting here talking about the Yankees are going to be one of the best teams in the American League. They're not the best team in their own division. They're the fourth best team in their own division. They might get 85 wins, and that's realistic. And I'm not trying to be this like, all oh, the Yankees suck. No, let's take a look at what's gone on here. The biggest move, yes, Juan Soto. Let's all praise that they brought in Juan Soto. They have three of the best players in baseball on their team. Two, by the way, have serious health concerns right now. One with Cole, who is going to be out for at least two months, maybe more. It really depends on how he feels. And is he going to really come back and be the ace he was last year? Or is he going to look more like Masahiro Tanaka? And then... Aaron Judge just can't stay on the field. And I'm not trying to predict a, an injury here, but the reality is he's always hurt. You could sit there and tell me Anthony Rizzo is going to be back with because of injuries. Like we figured out the concussion was a problem, and now he's going to come back. I don't believe it because even the year before that, he was on the downside. His back was giving him issues. DJ LeMay, who can never stay healthy. I like Liber Torres. Even for me, though, in a walk year, I love walk years. I still don't see him producing enough. He's 25 home runs, bats 250. It's just it's just not enough. Dude, this offense, Alex Verdugo, I'm sorry. Everyone's praising him. What a great move. He's Brett Gardner at best. That's, I, this is not impressive here. Tell me where you're impressed. What, Gene Carl Stanton lost a ton of weight, and now he's going to hit 40 home runs and bat 250? It's not happening. And then their pitching staff sucks. They don't have their ace. You talk about Carlos Rodon, who, yeah, he may not pitch to a 7 ERA, but he may still pitch to a 5 ERA. Nestor Cortez, they have no idea if, what his, if he's going to be consistently good or not. Marcus Stroman may give you five really good innings, but again, we're talking you're, you're heavy on your bullpen, and their bullpen is not as good as it was last year. I know Caleb Ferguson is here, um, but you are don't have Michael King. You don't have Michael King. You don't have Peralta. Those are those were two main forces in the bullpen. I just don't see how this team got better. I just don't. That's it. Well, so what's your prediction? The Orioles to win the AL East? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. That's what <laughs> you went off on a Yankee rant. I think you lost the AL East. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Orioles are winning the AL East. Blue Jays, gotcha. Rays make the playoffs. Yankees are out. So I'll tell you this much. The six teams that are in, Astros, Mariners, Twins, Orioles, Blue Jays, Rays. All right. So we've got a couple of similarities on that. The Astros, the Mariners, and the Orioles. So I guess three of the six teams in the American League are the same. Sticking to the American League, here's how I have the playoffs kind of breaking down based on my playoff teams. Cleveland knocks off Texas in the wild card uh, series. The Mariners knock off the Orioles. Another year of disappointment in Baltimore as they get bounced. I've got the Astros defeating Cleveland in the ALDS, and I've got the Mariners defeating the Yankees in the ALDS. We are going to get a Mariners-Astros American League Championship Series. And I'm trying to think about how many straight ALCSs that would be for the Astros because they've made it every year since 17. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This would be their eighth consecutive league championship series. 
And I've got the Mariners upsetting the Astros. The Seattle Mariners, for the first time in their history, go to the World Series. A year after the Rangers win their first championship, the Mariners go to their first World Series. And go around baseball. Play this game for a second. How many teams in Major League Baseball have never been to a World Series? Never been. Think about that. The Seattle Mariners, one of the last of the Mohicans, they will break the curse and win the American League pennant in 2024. Quickly, some American League awards. I've got Juan Soto winning the American League MVP, which at least makes sense to my pro-Yankee prediction. And I've got Luis Castillo winning the American League Cy Young, which also makes sense to my pro Mariners prediction. So that's my little bit of a surprise. The Seattle Mariners coming out of the American League and going to the World Series. We jump to the National League, and we jump to the National League West. I would love to pick someone but the L.A. Dodgers. I would. And even though you've got the quote-unquote scandal around Shohei Otani, and we have Yoshinabu Yamamoto getting off to a tricky start, the L.A. Dodgers will accidentally, like by accident, blindfolded, win 90-plus games. Just by accident. I think talent-wise, they are just so much better than everybody else, whether you're looking at their rotation, and they will get Clayton Kershaw back, whether you're looking at their bullpen, Evan Phillips, one of the better closers in baseball, or whether you're looking at that disgusting lineup that they have. I think they win 102 games. I think they win the NL West. As far as second place is concerned, I like San Francisco. I think San Francisco has had a very little sneaky end to their offseason with some of the moves they made, bringing in the defending Cy Young Award winner in Blake Snell, bringing in Matt Chapman, bringing in Jorge Soler to go along with one of the more reliable aces in baseball in Logan Webb. Do not be alarmed by Logan Webb having one of the worst spring trainings ever. I'm going to take a leap of faith that he's healthy and that it was just a bad spring training. I think the Giants have just an all-around solid baseball team. I have them in the high 80s, though. No, I don't think they're much more than that, but I think they're very good. The Padres lost a lot. And when you think about what they lost in this offseason, they added the pitching depth from the Soto trade, but they lost Blake Snell, too. They lost Josh Hader as well. I mean, think about that. They lost a Cy Young Award winner. They lost one of the best bats in baseball. And they lost one of the best closers in baseball. I mean, that is, that's the, the trifecta. That's the triplets of losing talent. With that said, they still have a lot of talent on this roster. I think Fernando Tatis Jr. has a monster year this year. We know how good Manny Machado is. So I still have the Padres in the mid-80s and being in a playoff race. I got them out about 85 wins. The Diamondbacks are the team I have taken a step back. And I remain consistent on this. I talked about this with the Orioles. I say it with Arizona. I think it is really tough to do it again, especially after the Diamondbacks raised the bar and raised the expectations by the postseason run they went on. Now, to their credit, they went out and added Eduardo Rodriguez, which was a nice addition to go along with Zach Gallon and Merrick Kelly at the top of the rotation, plus Brandon Fatt, who had a pretty good experience from the postseason. I just think that this is still a team that's a mid-'80s win team. They just got hot at the right time. So I have them in that same range, winning 82, 83 games. And then you got the Rockies, who could quietly be the worst team in baseball. It is on the table, especially when you factor in the division they're in. Like, let's not leave that out. I may be wrong about Arizona taking a step back. I still have them above 500. The Padres are above 500 team. The Giants are almost a 90-win team. And the Dodgers are a borderline juggernaut. Where are these wins coming from if you're the Colorado Rockies? So I've got two playoff teams from the NL West. I think the L.A. Dodgers win the West, and I have the San Francisco Giants being one of the wild card teams by finishing in the high 80s and making the postseason. I have one team from this West, and it's obviously the Dodgers. I mean, they're going to smoke everybody, 103 wins. I think that's like an under, underestimation there. I, it's hard to say 110, but that's what they could do. I mean, they really are that good. I think this division is still very weak. I love the Diamondbacks. I think that they're pitching like Zach Gallen. Um, I keep on feeling weird about him. I feel like he's going to take a step back, but he was one of the best pitchers in the league last year, up for Cy Young, at least a you know top ten contender. Uh, I love Corbin Carroll, the Moreno. I love Tel Marte. So they have a good squad. They'll come in second in that division, but with eighty five wins and missing the playoffs. 
Padres, I think, again, we're close. 83 wins. I think that they're like hovering. That team is is just not put together well. They are, and I don't care that they change a the manager. I don't care anything like that. I just think that they are are a very a calamity right now, whether it's Tatis, whether it's a Machado. Whether, there's just no leadership. There's no direction. And they're going to keep – and it's amazing they keep on trading for people, but they're going to – the turnarounds all over the place, there's no gelling. The Giants – I don't trust them at all. I listen. Blake Snell didn't want to go there. Um, Matt Chapman didn't want to go there. Maybe they lucked into some of these guys, but do they really want to go to San Francisco? I don't think so. I don't think they want to play there. They could Blake Snell could say, "Oh, I'm really happy here." My ass. He doesn't want to be there. And the Rockies are terrible. Sixty-five wins. So I just see Giants are going to be closer to seventy-four wins. And I just uh, the bullpen's good. Pitching staff is good. I just think their offense is is, is just too weak. Uh, so I think it's Dodgers 103 wins and Diamondbacks, Padres, Giants, Rockies in that order. A romp to the NL West. Then you've got the National League Central. And I hate what I'm about to do. I hate it. I hate myself because I would love to sit here and say the Cincinnati Reds are going to win the NL Central. I, I want to say the Cincinnati Reds are going to win the NL Central because they are such a good, young, exciting team. They've got so many good, young position players. But that pitching, man, that rotation is so hit or miss. This could turn out to be one of the worst rotations in baseball. Or Hunter Green puts it all together. Nick Lodolo puts it all together. And the Reds have a good rotation. I'm just kind of banking that that's not going to be the case. And I think the Reds are going to be one of baseball's big disappointments this year. So I'm not picking them to win the NL Central. You look at the Brewers. They've been such a constant over the last couple of years. But, man, did they lose a lot during this offseason. So I'm not picking the Brewers to win the American League Central. So who do we have left? We've got the Cubs. we got the Pirates. we got the Cardinals. I'm not picking the Pirates to win the NL Central. Then you got the Cubs and you got the Cardinals. I, I, I hate this. I hate picking them. I don't want to see them in the playoffs again. But let's face it. The Cardinals were an anomaly last year. The Cardinals never have bad seasons. In fact, the St. Louis Cardinals... Finishing under 500 this season, which would mark their second consecutive under 500 season, would mark the first time since 94 95, in which they weren't even full seasons. That would be the last time the St. Louis Cardinals had back to back seasons of finishing under 500. I also look at their offseason, and even though when they were throwing money around early on for Sonny Gray and Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, it was being mocked by some. But at the end of the day, while their rotation is old, I think their rotation's solid. I mean, I think it's an okay rotation. Sonny Gray gets healthy. You got Miles Michaelis. You got Lance Lynn. I mentioned for the Mets, Kyle Gibson, because as average as he is, he's reliable. He takes the ball every five days. I like their bullpen. Their closer, Helsey, throws 102 miles an hour. Giovanni Gallegos has turned into one of the more reliable relievers in baseball. And then you've got an offense that has Goldie, who still has it? Arenado, who still has it? They've got a little bit of youth with Jordan Walker, hoping to have a big second season. Victor Scott, who's on his way up. I know he's starting the year in the minor leagues, but he's a speedster who can hit a little bit. I think the Cardinals, unfortunately, bounce back in a big way. I think they win 90 games. I think they win the NL Central. I don't love the Cubs. Like, I don't love Justin Steele putting together another big-time season. I don't love Cody Bellinger putting together another big-time season. I like Christopher Morelli. He showed you a little bit last year, and I could see him having a big-time year. So I think the Cubs are kind of in the mid-80s. I think the Brewers are under 500. I think the Reds finish under 500. As I said, I think they're one of baseball's most disappointing teams despite all the good young superstar talent they have offensively. And I have the St. Louis Cardinals returning to their same boring-ass form and making the postseason and winning the National League Central and proving that there are just certain franchises that even when it looks like they're about to hit kind of that lull of years, they find a way to turn it around. Cardinals take the NL Central, the lone playoff team from the NL Central. All right. Well, the Brewers are the worst team. They're the second worst team, or maybe the third worst team in the, in the league, uh, in the NL, that is, because obviously the Rockies are, are on the bottom. But 
the Reds are going to find themselves not too far behind the Brewers. I just don't trust. I think the pitching is just atrocious. Their bullpen is not very sexy. They do have one guy in particular that I love, TJ Anton. He's coming coming off of Tommy John. But let's really realistically, I mean, what is he going to be able to do? He was a good bullpen arm, but that's not, you know, just because you have Alexis Diaz and then TJ Anton doesn't mean that you're going to have a star on a bullpen. You got to get to the bullpen with a lead, by the way, too, which I don't think they will. I just don't think these young kids are electric enough just yet. Pirates, everyone's high in the Pirates, and I, I don't see it. I, I I really don't. Like, they have a lot of young kids, but like Brian Hayes, for example, I think he's missing something. Um, You go up and down that lineup, it just – it's – there's a lot of guys that just don't scream – great ball players maybe they're good ball players so i have them close to 79 wins like i feel like that's good but just still nothing not not good enough to make the playoffs i have the cardinals coming in second place and i do have them about 86 wins so to me the cardinals do make that jump they they're gonna make that push they have the pitching staff like you said i'm worried about nolan arenado you know that just because fantasy purposes have been trying to trade him all, all off season, but his spring training has been terrible they say so that is concerning. I know spring training doesn't mean anything, especially for veterans, but he didn't have the greatest season last year. He's had some back issues. He's had some, he's had some issues, period. So he may be falling off. And Goldschmidt's getting older, but again, like you said, the pitching is good enough. The Cubs, all right, let me say this. All I'm going to say is this. I know how much the players and the Cubs loved David Ross and how much it pissed people off in the league that Craig Council went over there and took over that team. Like, a lot of people thought it was dirty. So, the Cubs can go one of two ways. They could either be really atrocious and a mess, or they could, if Craig Council is as good as they say he is, they could be a jump further than they were last year. And I'm banking on that. I'm banking that Craig Council is a legitimate manager, and he's going to make the Cubs become first place with 89 wins. There you go. Picking the Cubbies to take the NL Central. And you have the Cardinals making the playoffs too, right? So you got two playoff teams from the NL? Yes, I two. Yes. There you go. All right, let's get to our division, the National League East. We'll start at the bottom with the Nationals. They're building something, and you're going to start to see some signs of that, especially if James Wood comes up at some point this year. They got a lot of good young talent, but they're still not ready. They'll finish in the 90s. In terms of losses, Miami's clearly going to take a step back. They don't have Sandy Alcantara this year. Yuri Perez is banged up. A.J. Puck is now a starter. Lazardo is as good as it gets. Their lineup, though, leaves a lot to behold. I mean, is Tim Anderson going to give him a big bounce back year? Is Jake Berger going to build off of last year? I don't think they have a great offense. I think their pitching is weak after you get past Lazardo. I think the Marlins finish under 500. I actually think they finish closer to 90 losses than they do 90 wins, if that's really saying anything. They finish more, they finish closer to 90 losses than to 80, 80 losses. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and then we get to the top three teams. Look, I think the Braves are completely loaded. And as much as I want to see bad things happen to them, they're not going to. They are well on their way to a 100 win season. The Philadelphia Phillies are on that next level. They're better than us. We discussed that on the last Rico. They have a better lineup than us, even with the J.D. Martinez addition. And the top of the rotation is just so reliable. I think Zach Wheeler is going to have a big year and take home his first NL Cy Young. More on that in a little bit. So I think the Phillies are in the low 90s. I think that the win total to get you in the playoffs as a third wild card team is 86 wins. And that's exactly where I think our Mets are going to finish. I have us at 86 wins. I had us... In that pennant race, in that room with the Giants, with the Padres, maybe with the Cubs battling for that third wild card spot with Atlanta, St. Louis, and LA taking the divisions and Philly taking the top wild card spot. And then you've got two spots. And I think 86 can get you in. And I think that's where we finish. I think the JD Martinez edition was monstrous, obviously. The rotation is the big question we all have going into the season, but I've laid it out before. If you can score runs, if you can be a top offense, and I think this lineup now has that chance, more so with the addition of J.D. Martinez, I think you can survive mediocre starting pitching, especially if you have a really good back end of your bullpen. Look around baseball. 
How many reliable closers are there? How many really good top-notch closers are there? The Mets have the best one. Late in games, they have a one-run lead. We're all going to have confidence that Edwin Diaz will get those last three outs and get us those wins that sometimes other teams won't be able to secure. So I have us at 86 wins. And yes, I give you a positive. We will make the playoffs in 2024 as the third wild card team. So my six playoff teams from the National League, I've got the Braves and the Dodgers clearly as the top two getting that first round by. I've got the Cardinals winning the Central, and then I've got the Phillies, the Giants, and the Mets as the three wild card teams. How do I have them lined up in the playoffs? Unfortunately, I have us losing in the wild card round. Now, why? I mean, who the hell knows? We get to the wild card round, we'll take our chances. But I have us living kind of the uh, the demons of the past. I have the Cardinals defeating us in that best of three wild card series. I've got the Phillies beating the Giants. I've got the Braves beating the Cardinals. I've got the Phillies beating the Dodgers and the DS because that's what the Dodgers do. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to watch a living hell. We are going to have to watch a Braves Phillies NLCS, except this time the Braves get the revenge. The Atlanta Braves go back to the World Series uh, for the first time since 2021 when they won their championship. And we are looking at an Atlanta Braves Seattle Mariners World Series. My MVP will be Fernando Tatis Jr. My Cy Young Award winner will be Zach Wheeler. And I think the Braves will lose the World Series to the Mariners. They will take home their first championship. And that is my prediction for the 2024 World Series. Your postseason prediction's off. Well, you're depressing me, by the way. Let me, let me get my NL East in there real quick because I think you're spot on. Uh, I do think that the... Um, Mets are going to make it with 86 wins. I have them down for that, too. 86 is the magic number. I think them and Cardinals are tying for the 86 win total. Marlins think Nationals are out. Phillies, I don't think they're going to be as good as you're making them out. I think 87 wins. Braves taking it with 96. So I have the playoffs. Braves, Phillies, Mets, Dodgers, Cubs, Cardinals. I do have the Mets losing the first round to the Cubs. Phillies, Cardinals. Phillies beat the Cardinals in the first round. I have the Dodgers beating the Phillies, the Braves beating the Cubs. So it goes Dodgers, Braves for the pennant, and the Dodgers are going to the World Series to face. And I, I didn't do my AL stuff. So Astros, Orioles get the bye. Twins versus Rays, Blue Jays, Mariners. Rays beat the Twins. You got the Blue Jays beating your Mariners. Sorry about that. So Astros then will beat the Rays. The Blue Jays will beat the Orioles. For the World Series, the Blue Jays beat the Astros. It'll be a Blue Jays-Dodgers World Series. How about that? A little Blue Jay-Dodger action. The two yeah. finalists for Shohei Otani, right? The Blue Jays yeah. thought they were getting him. He was on the way there, wasn't he? <laughs> and that was what we off. were told, yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. Blue Jays-Dodgers from Hoff. I'm going with Mariners-Braves for me. By the way, send in your World Series predictions and Mets win totals. I think those are the big ones to send in. We'll read a few on the next Rico. The Rico B at gmail.com. If you want to email it, the Rico B at gmail.com. Or you could leave us some very quick prediction voicemails. The phone number being, let me see if I can get this one right. I'm feeling good today. 772. Did I really get that right? Now I'm, I'm home free. 72. Se wait, 772. Is that what you're no. saying? <laughs> no. You're Damn wrong. it. 725. Oh, 725. Okay, I didn't get it right. 725-222-8699. That's the number if you want to leave us a voicemail. Uh, one quick thing I want to bring up. You know, we talked about 86 being that number. At least I have 86 being the number that could get to the Mets, get the Mets to the postseason. In 2014, I don't know why this year jumps out at me. If we had the format we had now. 82 wins would have been enough to make the playoffs. There is going to be a year, and I don't know if this is necessarily the year in the National League, but there's going to be a year where 82 may get you in, where 79 may get you in, as crazy as that sounds. So I think it's going to vary year to year. Like in the American League right now, my number was 88 was the magic number to get you in. 
which I guess is pretty much the same ballpark, mid to high 80s. But that's where I have it. I have that number right now being about 86 wins, which is good enough to get you in the postseason. And then I'm, hopefully I'm wrong about all those postseason predictions. We're looking at a completely different World Series. But those are our official, on the record, you can't change it, MLB predictions. We'll go very Mets-specific this week on the Rico, and we'll also have some Met-Yankee bets for all you out there that want to bet your Yankee fan friends with some fun, creative wagers around the local teams. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and downloading Rico. Rate it if you can. And coming up soon, we promise you we're going to give you some live Ricos on YouTube. So when there is a Met game and we want to pop on and react to it, you're not going to necessarily have to wait for the downloaded version of Rico Brown. You will be able to get it live on YouTube. More information on that as we get closer. Thank you very much for downloading and listening. Check out Hoff on the Midday Show, BT and Sal, 10 a.m. on the fan. Me with Tiki, 2 o'clock on the fan. Thanks for listening to Rico Brilliant.